Hello, this is Kate McWilliams of Unprofitable Instruments, and I have a monochord here to share with you today. Now, a monochord is quite simply a one-stringed instrument. So it's a string on a box, and it's not a performing instrument. You wouldn't play a tune on it, but it's a scientific instrument. It was used throughout the Middle Ages um, as a theoretical tool um, to take something that's very abstract and turn it into something that's physical and oral and uh, visual. Um, so it's a fantastic tool. It was used to explore the relationship between number and sound, between ratios, um, and very specifically how you can take a length of string and change that length and get different pitches. So I can demonstrate a few um, basic concepts and then I'll just bring you into a little bit of, of how to create a scale, which is really fun. Um, so, we'll start off with a string length, and you're familiar with many of these, I'm sure, already. So, if you divide a string in half, you get a note one octave above the open string. So my open string in this case is a G, uh, representing gamut, the bottom note on the medieval uh, theoretical scale, bases and notes. Um, so if I divide my string length in half, I now have uh, the th couple things. I have the same note, this side and that side, if I put it in the right spot. So this is one to one, which is a unison. This is one to two, which is an octave. So here's my high G, there's my low G. Another very basic ratio would be the interval of 2 to 3, or the ratio of 2 to 3, which yields a musical interval of a fifth. So in that case, I'm going to divide my string into thirds. And I'll guess at it here. Um, so now I'm going to say I have three lengths of string. And here's two lengths. So the difference between this note is a fifth, interval of a fifth. And you can go a little bit further and say, well, if this is two lengths of the string and this is three, well, this is one. So now I have a ratio of one to two. So this note should relate to this note like an octave. Let's see if that happens. A little bit out of tune. I'd measured these out beforehand, you would have not heard me fumbling, but there I am. So we have the interval of, uh, or the ratios, we've got one to two, an octave. We have two to three, so this one to that one, bum, 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 for a fifth. And you can keep on going, uh, three to four. The ratio would uh, be the interval of a perfect fourth. And um, that's basically how you can play with ratios on the instrument to make a scale um, using the Pythagorean tuning. This was done uh, by many theorists throughout the Middle Ages. So um, if, if you're a theorist and you're writing a treatise about music, you will generally include a little section on how to divide your monochord. And, um, most of these tunings turn out to be a Pythagorean tuning. Uh, Guido is most famous for um, simplifying it a little bit so you can do it in a fast, easy way so then you can use your monochord instead of just spending all your time dividing it. Um, but then there are other tunings that introduce pure thirds um, and the just tunings and such. And so it's really interesting to see how theorists uh, present their division of a monochord, whether it's using as a teaching device or using as a specific sound that you want to get from the intervals. But anyway, let me just, um, the Pythagorean tuning is based off of a whole step of being nine to eight. And so the way you do that on a monochord is you take a dividers. This is before the day of, well, obviously computers or pianos or tuners or yardsticks or anything that we have, we'd use today to, to calculate intervals. But what they were doing was taking length of string 
and uh, comparing those ratios just based on length. And they did that with the dividers. And so um, you too can do this. I have sticks that I put on my monochord that you can mark on. You can also do this with a roll of receipt paper. Um, what you do is you draw a very straight line using a yardstick down the length that represents your string. Uh, you mark both ends to exactly represent what, what the length of your real string is. And then you take your dividers and to find, to start finding a scale, you'll have to divide this length into nine. So you take your dividers, put one end at the beginning of your string length, and very carefully, marching down your line, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoops, I'm quite a bit short. This is actually more like ten and a half. So I need to make this distance longer. So I'll try it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Closer. Still, still too small. Make it a little bit bigger. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very close now. And it's actually quite hard to get this last little bit to disappear um, because, well, as I'm doing it, I'm a little bit unexact. It needs to go right down the line, otherwise all the little compoundings of errors if you're a little bit off on, on each of these nine divisions. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to call that good for today's purposes at least. So you come back and with a pencil, mark a line on your first ninth. So now you can say, this string, or this line, is nine things long. We don't know what a thing is. We're not using inches or centimeters or anything. Um, and then this length is eight things long. So the sound difference between this one and this one will be a whole step. Let's give it a try. my open string and there's my first note. So that's G and that's A. Now how do you find B? This is fun to do with students. Um, sometimes they will say well B is just the next note so I swing up and I make a line and that's B. But it doesn't work that way because the intervals get smaller in length as they go up. So now if we want to go a whole step up from A to B we have to take this length and divide it into nine. And then we follow the same process for B. I'm not going to, well, I'm going to cheat and do it fast here for you because I have it pre-marked on my stick. So this is now a ninth of my new distance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, bingo. And mark it, that's A, and this note here represents B. So now I have the beginning of a scale, G, A, B. The next note from B to C is a half step, and that ratio is 243 to 256. So, 243, no, 256 of these. Um, medieval theorists didn't actually do this, um, but they used a much simpler ratio. So the interval of G to C is uh, a fourth, 
and it's a 3 to 4 ratio. And so now you can go back to G, your open string, and you want to divide this whole length into 8 and in, instead of 9. And I won't take the time to, to do all my fussing, but if you get your dividers so you can swing it 8 times and end up right here, then you sing it twice and you mark C right uh, at the end of that. So that is one quarter of the string length up for your C. And then the difference between B and C is just there. It's never actually calculated or measured out to be 243 to 256, but it's just the difference between our two ditones um, or a dito uh, and our perfect fourth. So those are the basic ratios. You can keep on going up the, the, the scale till you fill up your scale. The Pythagorean Guido Pythagorean tuning uh, or the gamut had um, about two and a half octaves, uh, included soft Bs, B flats, as the only accidental. Um, and so it's really great to be able to create that tuning on your monochord. There are, of course, other tunings. So you can take that and expand it and find all the sharps and flats. So chromatic Pythagorean, when I make a monochord kit, um, I provide you with um, three or four pre-marked sticks for your you know, factory-made sticks, <laughs> uh, Pythagorean and a chromatic Pythagorean, uh, one sample just tuning with a pure third, a few pure thirds, and then an equal tempered stick to um, be able to visually compare all of, all of those and orally. I've also started making mean tone sticks, which uh, you know, surpass the ability to find it or calculate it on a monochord, but um, you can measure it out and then you can have a mean, mean tone stick, the various mean tone tunings, so you can see um, and hear again how they work. Also, uh, monochord, obviously, uh, if you want to hear two sounds at once, you can get a dichord, which is a two-stringed monochord, and I just have an interval set up here so I can take my bridges and play two notes at once and hear that. So that's an introduction to my monochord. Thank you.